Okay, so this is the video I want to watch on the French and Indian War. Um, a lot of people don't really talk about this war a lot, but it, I would argue that it's one of the most important wars in American history because it really set the stage for what we're going to talk about coming up the next couple of weeks. So we're moving past 13 colonies. We've set them up. We've got New England, Middle, and Southern. But now you've got to think about this backcountry region down here in this red. And that's basically any place that is west of the Appalachian Mountains. So you have four colonies, or four sections of colonies, New England, Middle, Southern, and Bat Country. Now we're going to just flash forward to the 1600s. All right? And uh, by this period, France, because remember we're competing to gain land because we want to become the richest country in Europe, France had gained more land in America than even Britain had at this time. And they claimed pretty much everything west of the Appalachian Mountains is their own. Um, it was a very bold move. It was a lot of land to keep. And it ended up coming to uh, um, haunt them. But they called it New France. You know, not a very original name. They called it New France. And um, while they were over there, they found out there were a lot of animals over there, like bison, buffalo, anything they could take the fur off, bears. And the French begot, became really big in the uh, fur trading industry, and so did the British and Native Americans. They all kind of worked together to trade fur around the world. They made a ton of money that way. Um, and it really brought them together. It made them form alliances that they didn't really need to have and it eventually caused them to go to war. So, one of the areas that was very attractive to everybody in the fur trade was the Ohio River Valley area. And this was owned by France in their new country they titled New France. And there are a lot of Native Americans that already lived there, um, but now the British started moving in. There were Pennsylvania fur traders, the colonists that lived there that wanted to trade fur, they moved into the Ohio River Valley. There were the Virginia Land Company, because remember, land is probably the best thing you can own at this point, and there's tons of it, so colonists from Virginia moved in, and they were all trying to get around this Ohio River Valley area because it was uh, prime real estate for both the fur trade and expanding land. So the French became um, a little anxious. They got a little scared because England started pushing all their colonists over, and the British started flowing in the Ohio River Valley, and the more that came in, the French were worried, hey, we're going to lose control of this land. We're going to lose rivers that flow into our area that we can transport goods out. So they really became anxious and scared of what might happen if people kept coming over into their New France territory. So the tensions mounted because everybody wanted to trade for her. Everybody wanted to be in that land area. And we get the French and Indian War. Um, and you may not be able to tell, but that's a little gun right there saying boom. So the French and Indian War is where we're at. Now the war begins and spreads. And it's, uh, it's basically fought from anywhere in the back country. Remember, that area is west of the Appalachian Mountains, all the way to Canada. And it's a very expensive and long war. A lot of lives are lost, both in French, British, and Native Americans. Um, all the lives are lost there. But our soon-to-be first president, George Washington, led the first attack of the British colonists on the French at Fort Duquesne. And the Native Americans, they side with both the British and the French, because remember, they were all involved in this fur trade, and they felt... Um, you know, loyalty to the people that they've been trading with so long. So some of the Native Americans sided with the French because they traded together, and some of the Native Americans sided with the colonists because they traded together. And this war lasted for about nine years until the Treaty of Paris in 1763. It ended the war, and it basically said that French can no longer control any land in all of North America. So New France, gone. All right, Ohio River Valley, up for grabs. Um, and you kind of get this... Uh, for the, for the British, you know, they're incredibly excited because you had a combination of war and this treaty that expanded the British Empire beyond their wildest imagination. Remember I said in class, the sun never set on the British Empire for a very long time, and this is the reason why. They were opened up to New France because France had pulled out after this war. So this war was very valuable for the British in gaining land in North America. Now, unfortunately, the British are meanie heads. All right? They don't really treat the Native Americans very well, um, whereas once the F French would probably you know, maybe pay a little bit more, or they would treat them a little nicer, or take care of them in trade when they were trading with Native Americans, the British treated them very, very poorly. In fact, at one point, they kind of tricked them into coming to a meeting and then sent them back with blankets as a gift, but those blankets were infected with smallpox. And as we talked about earlier, you know, Native Americans did not have immunity or any medicines to help them treat diseases like this. So the British, you know, they, they just weren't great to Native Americans. But we knew that going in, so it shouldn't be any surprise. 
But the Native Americans fought back really, really hard, and they pushed back on, on the British, and the British soon realized that with all this land they now control, they're not going to be able to take control of everything and really regulate that land that they now own because, you know, America's all the way over here and England's way, way over there. And it's a small little country, a little king. Blah, 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 blah. He can't control that land. So if he can't control that land, he decides to issue the proclamation of 1763, which basically sets the stage for the American Revolution. This proclamation said that no colonists are allowed to settle west of the Appalachian Mountains. It forbade the colonists from moving west of the Appalachian Mountains. So all that land that opened up, colonists cannot go there. All right, you can imagine the feelings that colonists would have after all of that. So, you know, you get this kind of new colonial identity. Um, obviously, the colonists are angry. They're like, hey, we fought this war. You know, our children died, our fathers died, our uncles, our brothers died, our sons died. And you're telling us that after all this fight, we can't even move over there and settle on that land? So, of course, colonists, you've got a bad taste in their mouth towards the British. Not to mention, the war kind of united all the 13 colonies for the first time ever because they were fighting the French together. So all 13 colonies came together to fight one common enemy. So you have this sense of anger and this sense of unification, and it all kind of mixes together and becomes a unified uh, dispute with the British. You know, the 13 colonies, they're angry at the British. Now they feel unified. And now they're aiming that anger at the British for not letting them settle on that land. Now you can see why the French Indian War played a huge role in setting up the American Revolution.